We're setting up a 3D printer in Marlin 2.0 and we're starting right now. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. My name is Richard, and this is the show that explores the world of 3D printing. If you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and also ding that little bell so you get notified every time that we put up a brand new episode or we do one of our live streams on Saturday nights. So today what we're doing is we're jumping right into Marlin 2.0. I'm going to show you how to set up the CR-10S in Marlin 2.0, and we're going to be using Arduino IDE. So let's jump right in because we got a lot to cover. Okay, we're over here at the computer right now, and uh, we are online. We're looking for a specific couple of programs. And first and foremost, we're going to start with the Marlin firmware. Now, you can get this by going to marlinfw.org, and you'll just click the little download button, as you can see I'm doing here. And we're going to download the latest release, which is 2.0.xzip. So we're going to download that. We are going to put it into our downloads folder. And then we're going to go over, if you don't already have this, get the latest uh, Arduino IDE software. So the next program you're going to need is Arduino. And there are a couple that you're going to find here. The Arduino IDE uh, can be found at arduino.cc slash eng slash main slash software we'll put a link to that down in the description below and you're just going to go down to where it says download the arduino ide and we're just in my case we're going to use the windows installer so it's going to take us to this page and we're just going to say download now you can contribute to um, the arduino project by using one of these or another amount and then just contribute and download uh, it'll take it right from your paypal i believe or whatever if you'd like to support them uh, it's always good to support creators now that we've got both of them downloaded let's first install our arduino ide so in this case i'm just going to click on it and it should start the upload or they should start the install once those are installed we'll come back and we will dive right into showing you how to get into the marlin 2.0 All right, so you can see here on my in my downloads folder, I have Marlin-2.0.x, and then right beside it, we have Marlin Creality CR10S. Uh, and what I'm going to do, because this is an older version of Marlin, I'm just going to rename this one for the printer that I am going to be using. So what you want to do is just uh, click on the name, and uh, I'll go to the end here, and I'll just add a dash, and I'll just go cr 10s so i know which version of marlin i'm using now this folder is going to remain this name so now i know that i'm doing this for the cr10s so that's the one we're going to do today so once you double click it you'll open up a folder that says marlin 2.0 x we'll just double click that again and in here we will find all of the configuration data that we need. Now, if we go straight into Marlin, you can see it's quite different from the older version of Marlin, where you used to have a lot of files uh, listed here. Now we only have a few files, uh, two most important being the configuration and configuration advanced files, along with our Marlin file. Now, in order to be able to um, do a lot less finding and figuring out we're going to go into the configuration file and you'll find that there's an examples file right here under law underneath the default if you double click that you're going to be presented with a bunch of different file folders that are for a variety of different uh, 3d printers and what we're looking for today is the creality and then we will go down and we will find our CR10S, which is right here. You'll see there's a file for CR10 and one for CR10S. There's also ones for the CR20, CR20 Pro, uh, the Ender series as well. Uh, so we're gonna, just going to use the CR10S and we're going to double click that. Now there's four files in here. What we want to do is copy all four files. So I'm just going to highlight all four files. I'm going to right click on top of them. I'm going to say copy. I don't want to move them or cut them. I just want to copy them. And now I'm just going to go up to where my um, back to that root directory where it says Marlin. We're going to double click that. 
and right here is we're going to we're going to paste those files in so we'll just paste the files in and we're going to say yes we want to replace the destination files in this case so you can see now it's got that boot screen the status screen configuration and configuration advanced files so now what we're going to do is we're going to open up marlin and it will open up your Arduino IDE. Let me just put that on the screen for you. And I've got the lettering kind of big here so you guys can see it. Um, and you'll see that we have just six files open here. Our main Marlin screen, our Configuration H, our Configuration Advanced H, Version, Boot Screen, and Status Screen. So the only two files we're going to be playing in right now are the Configuration H and Configuration Advanced H. If you've done this right, all four of these files will appear here. When we're in the Configuration H, this is the main file that tells uh, the firmware or the machine how to operate. So this is your firmware. Now, you don't have to configure this in anything other than, than the Arduino platform. You might get a little pop-up that says it, you need to update your libraries. We haven't gotten that, so we're okay. Uh, before we go and do anything, though, we need to go up to Tools, and we need to make sure that we have the correct board in here. So we are going to go down to Get Board Info. This has changed a little bit from what it used to be. Um, you can see right now we've got a programmer set up here and a bootloader. It's not connected, so oh, we're not connected to a board. That's why it's, there we go. It's into now it's in tools. So we want to make sure that we are in the Arduino Genuino Mega or Mega Twenty Five Sixty. That is the one that we want to have checked. Uh, the processor is uh, the AT Mega Twenty Five Sixty Mega Twenty Five Sixty. And the port will depend on where you're plugging this in. Now you're going to have to plug your printer in using a USB cable um, in order to get this firmware up to your CR10S. Now the CR10S usually comes with a 2.1 or 2.2 board. They already have a bootloader on them. They're compatible with the Arduino uh, Mega Series chipset. They're not a very they don't have a very big programming, so we're, we're not going to do a lot of changes here. So now that we've got that done, that's all set up. Then we can verify that down here in the corner. Uh, if I got my big head out of the way, down at the bottom right-hand corner, you'll be able to see uh, what you're on. So let's uh, go down through our sketch here, and we'll just have a quick peek and make sure that things are going to where they should be going. Now, if you've installed this correctly, your line numbers will be exactly the same as mine. We don't have to change anything on the serial port. Um, we don't have to change the baud rate. None of this has to be changed. Now, this is board ramps creality uh, for defining the board. That board now is in the board's listing, so you don't really have to worry about it. And the machine name is a CR10S. So we want to just double check to make sure our filament diameter is correct at 1.75 or if you're using a bigger one, which I don't know why you would be, um, you would change that to 3.0 or 2.85 or what have you. Uh, but you mostly should be using 1.75 because that's the, the setup that a CR10 has. We're not using a Cyclops um, extruder. We're not using Prusa, anything like that. So we're going to go down now to the next section that I want to talk, briefly talk about, and that's thermal settings. In the thermal settings, we are using just generic uh, K1000 thermistors, and this is what this is for. So you'll notice down here as we go to line 408 that the temperature sensor is a 1. And if we go back up to our listing, we can see that a 1 is a 100K thermistor, best choice for EPCOS, e EPCOS, a 100 uh, 4.7k pull-up resistor and that's exactly what it is and the same thing goes for uh, line 414 which is defined as your temp sensor for the bed and that will be again another one of those types of sensors on the bed um, we're going to leave all of this alone we don't have to to mess with it and what this area is is this is just telling your heater what temperatures what your max temperature should be now 
They're saying 250 on max temp now. They've got it down to 250. You can increase that. Um, your minimum temperature is going to be five uh, on anything. If you've got a broken thermistor wire, you're going to get a thermal runaway uh, error. Just so be aware of that. Now the max temp at line 453 is your bed max temp and that's set at 120. You can change that if you like. Uh, shouldn't go over that. We're not going to touch the PID tuning settings for either the bed or the nozzle. We don't really have to. Thermal runaway. This is a, something I get a huge question on all the time. And that's thermal runaway because this is what has to be enabled in order for your printer not to burn down your house. And there's been a lot of controversy over that. And in this case, we are going to be using, uh, we want to make sure that we've got thermal protection for the hot ends enabled. And we can, we have them enabled because we don't have the two little slashes. But this one down here at the bottom, line 581, which is thermal protection chamber. Our printer's not in a chamber, so we really don't have to use that. So we're just going to put a couple of slashes in front of it. And what that's going to do is it's going to uh, mark out um, or disable that line of code for our uh, CR10 because we don't have a chamber around. If you have a chamber around it and it's a heated chamber, then by all means, uh, keep that enabled. Um, our machine settings, we're not using a Core XY. All of this should be done correctly. Now, I did this for a customer's printer not too long ago and everything seemed to work just fine. Uh, we didn't have to mess with any of the end stops. This is an interesting section. If you are using the default board uh, and you're not using one of their silent boards or, or um, one of the SKR boards, they do have 4988 steppers on them. If you were using another board, you would change this to the appropriate stepper. And you can see that all of the steppers are listed here between 657 and 661. Those are all the different steppers and the modes in which they're in. Right now, we're going to leave this as an A4988. And uh, later on, we're going to show you how to change this for a different board like the SKR board. It'll be a little different in programming as well. And now we'll just uh, continue down. Now you'll notice here that it says define steps per unit and it says 95 for our E steps on E0. Now it should be between 95 and 93, somewhere in there. If you are having a problem with under extrusion, by all means, you'll be able to change that number so you get a little bit more extrusion. If you're having over extrusion, again, you're gonna change that number to a lower number so that you don't, uh, you don't get that over extrusion anymore. All of this is pretty standard. We can leave all these feed rates at what they are. What I do want to show you, though, is down here in the default jerk settings. Um, you can see here where it says define limited jerk editing. Um, this is where you can edit your jerk on the fly. We're just going to edit it here. We're going to take this 10 and we're going to mark it down to 8. Because 8 is the appropriate number. And this is at lines... 770 and 771 and you're probably going to ask me well rich why would you change that jerk down lower the problem that the problem that i find with the jerk settings is they're typically set too high so that's where you're going to get a lot of that ghosting you're going to get a lot of the ringing um, salmon skinning is, is a good example of that as well and that's what we're going to leave it at now before we go any further we're just going to go up here to the top of the page and you'll see an arrow that's pointing down. If you hover over it, it'll say save. We're just going to save the work that we've done so far. And now if you're using any type of auto bed leveling, this is where you're going to change it. So your Z probe options uh, start at uh, 805. Um, and in this case, we're not using any kind of, of bed leveling. We don't have a BL touch on this particular one, so we're not going to define a BL touch. We're going to leave it just as it is. So if you have a BL touch, certainly you want to make sure that you go and change it. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a later episode as well, where we're going to do some add-ons and we'll show you how to change those in your firmware. As we go through this, everything should be set fine. Uh, all these values are taken directly from Creality, from my understanding. So everything should work fine. There shouldn't be any 
uh, movement discrepancies whatsoever. And we can go and have a look and see exactly how big our bed should be. Uh, this is your bed leveling. Uh, right now it's set to auto bed leveling by linear. That's fine. Uh, we don't have a BL touch uh, on it. So we're just using the, the little, um, little breaker thing there. And we're continuing through our bed leveling here. Now we're into additional features. This is something that you can change if you like. I don't recommend going in here and mucking around. But your preheat constants, um, this is something you want to have a look at. You'll notice here that uh, we've got PLA set to 205 and our bed set to 60. That's a great place to start putting your, your um, bed temperature at when you're preheating. These are different patterns for cleaning the nozzle. You don't have to really worry about your job timer is set to auto start. So that's a good thing. We can leave that enabled. Uh, our LCD is set to English and that pretty much wraps up everything that this particular machine needs. All we need to do now is we don't really even need to go into anything else. We're just going to save all of our changes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to verify that all of these changes are good by going to the top of our screen just underneath our menus you'll see that there is a check mark uh, in a circle that is your verify and we're just going to click that and let this verify all right so when your compiling is done the message that you should see is the one that we see here down at the bottom and it says sketch uses 15 61 94 bytes or 61 percent of the program storage space and then it's also going to tell you what the global variables, variables are, which is 60% of dynamic memory. Now that dynamic memory is important because the sketch itself is using 61%. So that leaves us 39% for buffering and that kind of stuff. And of the dynamic memory, either I've got this right or I've got this backwards, but the dynamic memory just gives you a little bit of extra space as well. So uh, if you want to turn some extra things on, you could. So that pretty much completes exactly how you're going to put together um, an Arduino setup or a Marlin 2.0 setup with a stock profile. So you're using the examples as we explained earlier from the examples kit. They're done really well. They're not done to any type of, of bad spec. Uh, I've used them on printers before, so as far as I know, to this to date, they are done correctly. Uh, you may have to go in and tweak some things. That's just the nature of the nature of the beast. But for now, this will kind of get you started if you want to update the firmware on your CR20 or CR10 or any Creality machine, for that matter, any machine that that is in the examples. And if you upload it and something's not moving right, all you're going to have to do is just go back and just change uh, a variable from true to false. That's pretty much all that you're going to have to do. Uh, with that said, that's pretty much the end of today's tutorial. If this is your first time here, thank you for joining us. I hope you got something out of today's tutorial. If you did, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Also hit that message bell so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode here on the first layer and uh tonight we're recording from home we're going to do a lot more of these uh tutorials and just kind of walkthroughs of marlin and through um different slices as we go through the year and then we're going to get into some more advanced tutorials as well so you make sure you want to stick around now this video that is up here there we go up here this one is uh our last video uh, which was our top five. If you want to go back and watch that, we would encourage you to do so. And down below, down below right here, is a video that YouTube has chosen that you might find interesting based on this video. And of course, like I said, always like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment down below. And we will do our best to answer those comments. Remember, on Saturday night, we have our Ask for Help. And we're going to try and answer your questions. So go ahead and send those questions to questions at thefirstlayer.com. Until next time, my friends, the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.